So right now, Harry's going to show us an example of one of the uh, templates for desktop. Yes, exactly. As Tim mentioned, it's not just about web apps. It's also about desktop. So what you're looking at here is a downloadable desktop application template. What does that mean? It's an MXDA with a bunch of tools that we've already created for you. So this is the target hazard analysis. And I just want to point out that for what you're going to see me do, it requires the standard or advanced license level to desktop. So I've already taken the time to download this information. And this is what I was given. I have some great help documentation. I have maps and geodatabases. This is a pre-configured MXD, as well as some pre-configured tools that allow me to run this target hazard analysis. And I also have a geodatabase. If the application requires any auxiliary information, that will be in here as well. And in fact, I do have some target hazard analysis information. So once I open up that MXD, this is what it looks like. So you may be asking yourself, well, what is target hazard analysis? Because I did when I first looked into this. Fire departments try to figure out, they, they try to pre-plan what major events can happen that could be hazardous. So this template is created for firefighters and for fire departments to look at a par parcel and look at an area and determine which parcels and which buildings and which structures are most hazardous. It's going to be taking in many different criteria, such as the number of people, the building floors, and so forth. So that's what we're going to be looking at here. We're going to want to find which parcels are the most hazardous given the criteria. So the first thing we want to look at is the auxiliary information that was given to us. So this spreadsheet lists some of the criticalities that fire departments look at often. For example, here we have a church. A church is considered an assembly type because people assemble there and there's generally a lot of people. Well, if we look at the corresponding criticality score of that, we'll see that an assembly type gets a score of four. Four is pretty critical. This is a scale of one to five with one being the least critical, like storage sheds, because people don't live in those normally, um, to the most critical, which are the industrial buildings and manufacturing buildings. We also have scores for building area. The larger the building, the more critical it is when a fire is considered. So here we can see criticality score four between 60 and almost 100,000 square feet. And we can continue to look at these such as building height. They're all ranked and they're all scored. So this is the information that can be configured and collected by fire departments. So back in ArcMap, what we have are tax parcels as well as this empty feature class called target hazards. If we look at the attributes for the tax parcels, you'll see that it has some very good information, such as the number of floors, the area of the building, as well as their use description, such as a medical office or a residential single family, multifamily. What I want to do is take this information that are on our tax parcels and put it in that empty feature class for target hazards. To do this, all I need to look at are the tools that are pre-created that come with this template. And there's one called load hazard parcel data. So I'm going to run this tool, and I'm going to select what layer is my target hazard layer. I'm also going to select which layer is my parcels. And that's it. I just hit OK. The tool is going to look at my tax parcel data, take only the fields that are necessary for this analysis, and then put them into my target hazard analysis layer. And there you can see my target hazards. And now they're populated with many of those information, such as the use description and so forth. So the next step is I want to populate those criticality scores, those scores from 1 to 4. Well, to do that, there's a script I can run. Once again, I'll select my target hazard feature class. And I'll navigate out to my spreadsheet that lists all those criticalities. So I want to enter my occupancy spreadsheet. So that's my lookup right there. And I want to enter my life safety spreadsheet. That's my life safety lookup. 
and hit OK. So now I'm going to be adding those numbers, 1 through 4, to each one of these particular parcels. There we go. So the final step is to weight each one of these parcels based upon that criticality score. I want to add up all those numbers. So we have another model created called the Summarize Hazard Value. And what's nice about this model is it takes into consideration all the different criteria that we have in that spreadsheet. So here we see what's called a fire flow, which, by the way, is just how much water you can dump on a fire. And we've weighted that with a 10. We see the occupancy type weight as 25. So the buildings that are churches and manufacturing get a higher weight than storage sheds. So there's many other options we can have. I'm going to enter in 25 for my building height and then hit OK. So this model is now going to run and add up all those values, including this weighted information. And I need to pick my correct feature class first. There we go. So now we'll let that run, and then we'll go ahead and thematically map this based upon that score. So let's look and, and symbolize this based upon my total hazard score. And I'll invert this color ramp so that the ones with the higher score are red, and I'll hit OK. So here we go. What you're looking at is the parcels in red are the most hazardous given the criteria we've chosen. So when the fire department is planning for emergency response or planning to uh, allocate resources, the ones in red will be the m highest priority. And just to let you know, it's the Naperville Central High School as well as the Edward Hospital Medical Center here. What's great about this type of analysis is that it can be reran many times using different values for those weighted information. So here is that exact same analysis ran, except I took in consideration economic impact as being a higher uh, criticality score than anything else. And this makes sense that the hospital is now red because the hospital employs a large number of people. The other thing that's great about running this type of analysis is that we can look at it through time. So this analysis has been ran for many, many years, and here's what it looked like in 2007, 2008, 9, 10, and so forth. We're looking at the changes that have occurred in the parcels, the zoning, or what has been built. Now, this information is very, very useful and very, very valuable. The thing is, it only lives on my laptop right now. All this analysis was done in desktop in ArcMap and it's right here. This would be something that the fire crews and everyone in the field should have. So I want to share that with them. The new way that we share information is by first signing into ArcGIS Online. And I'm going to share this information as a service. So I'm going to file, share as a service. I'm going to publish the service. And I'm presented with an option. I could either publish this to my on-premise existing ArcGIS for server, which many of you have, or I could choose to publish this to ArcGIS Online in the cloud. In this instance, I'm going to publish to ArcGIS Online because I do not have an external facing server that I can use. And I'll call this target hazard analysis and go OK. Now, I've already taken the time to publish this, so I won't walk you through every single step that it takes. And I'll show you what my results look like. So here's that target hazard analysis map. I've adjusted some of the symbology, and I've pre-configured the pop-ups to show you the, the parcels that are the most hazardous. And since this is now a web map, it can be opened up on any device, uh, iPhone, an iPad, Android, Windows tablet, whatever, whatever the field crew has out there. So this is how we can now share this information to the appropriate people very quickly and very easily. 
So remember, I downloaded a template from our solutions site. That template included maps, tools, and data sets that are already uh, set up to run with this analysis. I then ran the analysis on my desktop and then shared it out through ArcGIS Online to get it to the people who needed it the most.